Well, good morning everyone. It's October 16th, 2022. I'm at Utica, New York's Union Station. It's 37 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 degrees Celsius, 7.30 in the morning. I've taken many trains out of Union Station, countless trains really over the years on Amtrak and the Adirondack Railroad going back to 1981. Today, however, will be a new destination, Tupper Lake. The first revenue train from Utica to Tupper Lake in 41 years. So, hope to get a few interviews and get some interesting video segments along the way. Well, I'm now inside Union Station at the Adirondack Ticket Office and there is a long line of people waiting to take the what the Adirondack is calling the High Peaks Limited today to Tupper Lake the first revenue train as I mentioned to Tupper Lake in 41 years I'm with a friend of mine this morning Doug Allison a recently retired career railroader who was the I was the general manager and general, executive director of okay. the Adirondack Scenic from 1993 to 1999. And you were on the last train to Tupper from Utica, correct? Or? I brought in the last train from Tupper Lake to Utica on August 5th, 1980. I was the brakeman on the train. So it's actually been since 1980 since the last run to Tupper Lake, the last, the last run. public run was August the 5th, 1980. That's the day that the state of New York shut the railroad down. And you've come in today from Ohio to ride the train. That's correct. And can you tell us just a little bit about uh, uh, why you came all the way from Ohio to, to ride this train? Well, it's kind of important to me because in 1980, on August the 5th, when I went on duty, I didn't know it was going to be the last trip down. I didn't know they were shutting the railroad down, so it's just... It wasn't quite an ordinary day at work, but nobody at that point in time that afternoon thought there was going to be a shutdown. So shortly after going on duty, we did find out New York State was shutting it down. We didn't know that was going to be forever either. So on duty at Tupper Lake, brought the train into Utica. The night train didn't go out, so we had to go and couple everything up together to bring it out. And then we did headed back to uh, Fendera to park the equipment. And even though the Adirondack Railroad's been running in one form or another since 1992, it's the first run to Tupper because of the big rehab project the state did over the last couple of years, restoring to service tracks from Big Moose to Tupper Lake. Correct. So. Well, I boarded the dome car in the lower level. Folks, are we all set for a big trip up to Tupper today? Yeah, we are. All absolutely. right. Looking into the sun. And we're just leaving Union Station, 836. And we'll shortly be crossing the Mohawk River. A shot that was captured yesterday in my video. Because this area, the, you, the impact that this railroad had on the Adirondacks is beyond belief. Because people that lived up here were subsistence farmers and, and they worked in the mines and they worked as lumberjacks for many, many, many years. And the railroad gave them access to the outside world. Instead of waiting six months for your order for six years of Roebuck, you got it within a week. So, and you could also ride down this line to go somewhere else, which most of the young people did and never returned. That's why the train songs are all so sad. This line also was very used in World War II. You know, a lot of soldiers, sailors, airmen, coast guardsmen came down this line, and a lot of them didn't come back or came back in a casket in the baggage car. Uh, the, uh, my dad, my uncles, and uh, rode this line. My dad was off for uh, North Africa, and North in North Africa, Sicily, and Italy. And my uncle was off for Okinawa in the Pacific. And my other uncle made propeller shafts for submarines and PT boats at Alco in uh, Albany or in Schenectady. So uh, this line has had a, a huge history. Love this poster. 
Boats and Travel, Comfort to Utica, New York Central. The Smooth Scenic Water Level Route. We're on the Mohawk, Adirondack and Northern Railroad now. The Adirondack has trackage rights on this railroad for 23 miles until we reach Snow Junction. We're eight miles north of Utica. And we are, we are passing through Holland Patton, New York, 12 miles north of Utica. Here's the old New York Central passenger station, now used by the town. So I'm with Bill, a car host today and a longtime volunteer on the Adirondack and unfortunately he was giving a little talk about what Tupper Lake meant to the railroad, what was interesting about Tupper Lake and the railroad. So I thought uh, I'd ask you to please uh, tell us just a little bit more about Tupper Lake and what they received and that sort of thing. Okay, Tupper Lake was once served by two railroads, the New York and Ottawa and then eventually in the 1890s the uh, New York Central North uh, Adirondack. So uh, there's a lot of history that goes with those two, but I'm going to stay away from that at the moment. What uh, the Tupper Lake was a center for forest products, and they, they made uh, there were not only dimensional lumber and sawmills, they made uh, farmer matches, wooden shovels for ammunition. Uh, factories, wooden spoons, uh, skis, all kinds of wooden products, as well as wooden chemical products. Another huge operation up there that had a, a, its own railroad was the Brooklyn Cooperage Company. They made staves and heads for barrels, which in which everything from uh, gunpowder to flour and beer was shipped in those days. Uh, they made excelsior, lump, uh, excelsior uh, wooden packaging material, which is something we should bring back and get rid of those darn plastic peanuts. And uh, uh, they made that stuff work, could be reused, and it made a great fire starter. But the uh, history of Tupper Lake is intertwined with the uh, forest products industry. And today, most of that is gone. There might, there's probably a few boutique sawmills around for the architects and folks building modern day great camps. But the history of Tupper Lake is, is totally wrapped up with the uh, timber industry. It started with John Hurd's railroad that went, uh, the north became the New York and Ottawa. And when uh, uh, when Dr. Seward, or Dr. Seward Webb was building his, this line, uh, he wanted to. He had made a deal with the Webb to hook up with the uh, New York and Ottawa to get to Montreal. Well, Hurd pulled the deal out from under him in the middle of the night, something you didn't do to William Seward Webb, and he turned around and, and mapped out the line the way it is today. Uh, and built it in two years through the un uncharted wilderness using uh, mules, black powder, and uh, a whole lot of hired labor. Now, will this be your first trip to Tupper Lake on the rails, or did you go with, during the Adirondack Railway uh, days? I was there once during the 1980s during the Adirondack Railroad uh, era, but uh, that was uh, very quick. We were there and went back, so that was that was a very short trip. Well, thanks. Thanks, Bill, and uh, we're joined for a quick oh. moment by Al Haywood, our assistant Hi, conductor Josh. today, and uh, food trays coming through. So just oh, I'm in the way. Thank you. so Al, glad to be aboard. And you got any special thoughts on this first trip to Tupper Lake? First, all the way through trip. I did the right. uh, I did the one from Thundera to Tupper as well, but this is the first the revenue, first revenue train, and the first train from. Utica to Tupper, so the first one all the way through. Looks like we'll uh, have a great day for it. The weather looks great. Uh, the, the folks in Tupper have some festivities for us. We're going to stay an hour and a half or so, and they've got all sorts of, they have a function at the junction right. uh, for us today with all sorts of activities, so looking forward to it and, and a beautiful ride. Well, sorry for sticking that camera in your face. That was, a pretty, right. that was a pretty good impromptu interview. That's all right. Thanks, Al, and thank you very much, Bill. You're welcome. We are in Remsen, New York, 21 miles north of Utica. Still on the Mohawk, Adirondack, and Northern. To my left will be the replica New York Central Passenger Station. 
built about 90, 1999 to the original station plans. Uh, it burnt at one time and they were able to restore it from pictures. Oh, that's our good. Back to our and our just about two miles from here, we'll come off the mat, walk Adirondack and Northern and go on to the Adirondack Railroad's home rails at a location known as Snow Junction. And this is Snow Junction. The tracks to my right go to Lions Falls on the Mohawk Adirondack and Northern. And we are now on the home rails of the Adirondack Railroad. There's a little sign over there to mark it as Snow Junction. So from here it's 85 miles to Tupper Lake. So I'm on the open air car, also known as a refrigerator car, in this weather and we're coming into Thendera. This car is right behind the engine. Some more crew members are joining us here. We'll stop for a few minutes and be on the way again. Here comes my friend Bill Mall, who was, of course, in yesterday's video. He's the conductor on today's run to Tupper. He's talking to an employee of the railroad who's following our train in a high rail. How's it going so far, Bill? Okay so far. That sounds good. Time to go to Tupper Lake now. That's right, Bill. From all Alabama to six. All the way. Wow. And as mentioned, the open air car is just behind Adirondack 1845. Head of 1845 is Adirondack 2400, sporting the new paint scheme for the railroad. And leading the trio of engines today is on loan for the Mohawk Adirondack and Northern, number 2042. We are still in Thundera, but should be underway momentarily.
This is Tupper Lake, New York. Station's just ahead. Gonna flag the crossing and go forward. Haywood again. Again. <laughs> this time uh, with a little notice, not just sticking the camera in his face. And Al, can you tell my, our, my viewers what's going to happen now, now sure. that we're here in Tupper Lake? Sure. What we've done is we've moved the train a little further north. The passengers are off. Looks to be having a great time. We have disconnected the engines from the north end. They will come down this parallel track next to the consist. And I've just reversed this switch. And the engines will come back out onto the main track behind us and then back up and hitch on to the south end. So the, the consist stays the same, we just move the engines to the other end. It was a great trip up, perfect Absolute weather. Gorgeous weather, gorgeous trip. Uh, no issues, obviously the track's still under conditions, so some speed restrictions, but great day. Very good, so we'll watch the engines come forward then. Very surely. Thanks, Al. You bet.
with Doug Allison and we're in Tupper Lake. And Doug, what's it, uh, what's it mean to you to see the first train up here since you rode the last one down in 1980? Oh, it just means a whole lot. It's 42 years to make the round trip, so I'm glad I'm back again. Well, I'm glad you could make it from Ohio to be here. Any interesting story, one or two you might want to tell about Upper Lake in the past? Well, back on August 1st, August 4th, 1980, I went on duty in Utica, 7 o'clock in the morning, with engineer Lester Foley and conductor Jimmy Williams. I went north, we had one of the Conrail engines, 9968, a DeWitt Jeep. We're pulling out of Utica, Lester's running. Teddy Spaziani was an old New York Central guy. He was on one of the traveling switchers. He said, hey, don't break that engine, don't break that engine. Those 9900s had a fast start switch. He wanted to make sure Lester knew about it so he didn't blow it up. So we went north up to uh, Lake Placid. I went off duty at 1.30 in the afternoon. For whatever reason, I decided to go south as a deadhead on my own time and get a new change of clothes or sleep in my own bed or some such thing. So I was going south, we had that Conrail 9968, three miles north of Floodwood, and we derailed. We put the whole train on the ground except for the locomotive. How fast were you going about? Uh, we were doing 30-35, we'd just come into a 10 zone. Derwood Carmen was the engineer, he pinched it down to 10. We're all kind of looking at each other because Derwood was, was a pretty hot runner, he liked the speed. But Derwood had her right at 10. We're looking back on the train and the whole train started dancing, the cars bouncing up and down. We went into emergency and there we were. The engine stayed on the rail. We loaded everybody up on the engine, took them down to the Floodwood Crossing. We made two trips doing that and somebody from Old Forge had called buses. So we, we were taken out in buses. So I got back home this, that night, what year was it? 1980, 1980, August of 80. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then the next day, I called in to Mark Ups, you know, what's going on? I knew we were on the ground north of here. Trainmaster says, you better get up to Tupper Lake. You're on duty at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So my aunt took me up here, dropped me off right here. Our train was parked right where this train is now. 5 o'clock, I went on duty. My first job was to get our train orders. There was a house over here, it's out of sight through the brush, that's where our Tupper Lake operator was. So I went over to get our train orders. We had the work train here, the 107 locomotive. And I went over there and they told us, that's it, the railroad shut down. You guys are going to Utica, you're done. No kidding, just like that, huh? Just like that, right? Did you run any of the trains during that the Olympic period? Were you? Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Now, this, was, this was the August after. I, I hired on after the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Doug Ellison. No, oh, I've heard your senior name and yeah. associated with our stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, go on duty here. We had a Rule 99 in effect on our, our 19 order, which meant we had a flag because that work train was going to follow us down. The train master, Robbie Palmer, says, you better be back on that open air car, and any time we're not making track speed, he says, you throw out a few Z. So those guys have moved there in tonight, so they're likely to rear end us. <laughs> so we got down to Nahasni, we had to make a stop down there for a pickup. I ran off the back end of it, I put down two torpedoes, threw off the few Z's, got whistled in. Remember, we didn't have radios back then. What's a, what's a few Z? It's a red flare. Oh, okay. Railroads call them few Z's, yeah. you probably call them a flare. Yeah, yeah. So, off we went. Robbie was in probably pretty much a wild mood that night. We came down off Moulin Hill, we were rocking and rolling. He said he was going to cross the Route 28 overpass at 30 miles an hour and be stopped at the platform, and he did. In Thindera? In Thindera. So we crossed Route 28 at 30, and he had the train at a gentle stop at the station. You so were we, right, You were a brakeman? I was a brakeman. Yeah. Yeah, were you ever an engineer? Not till after the resurgence. Yeah. So, after that, you know, the people that were going to Utica, they closed the dining car, they opened up the bar car, free drinks for everybody. Well, I guess there was a bright side to it. There was a bright side. We came rocking down Purgatory Hill. Years later, I asked Robbie, I said, how fast were we going? Because it was like riding a roller coaster. He goes, oh, 
between 70 and 75. Holy smokes. <laughs> so we got down to Utica, thunder, lightning, pouring rain. I'm on the front of the engine, taking us in. The night train hadn't gone out because we were closed down. And normally this one switch was lined for us to come in. Well, tonight it wasn't. I'm swinging him up with a lantern. Again, we didn't have radios. He ain't stopping. I jumped off the engine, took my lantern, threw it against the cab window. That got his attention, but we'd already split the switch. So we had to work down there. What does that mean, split the switch? We went through it the wrong way. Oh, yeah, okay. Trailed through it the wrong way. Bent it all up. So what a freaking mess that was. So it took us an hour and a half to get the points jammed back over so we could push back into Union Station, get the passengers off, and we combined the two trains. We had engine 29, 28, and must have been seven cars. And we they marked me off duty 1.30 in the morning. And I rode the deadhead move up to Fendera. They shut the engines off, and that was it. That was the last hurrah of the that Adirondack the Railway. Hurrah. That was the morning of have August been, uh, 6, 1980. I walked off the have train. You been doing rail, rail work during the resurgence during, uh, down in the Fendera? Uh, I, I came back in 1992. I helped get the whole thing started again. And uh, then I was the executive director and general manager for ARPS from 90. Well, I was with a chapter in 93. ARPS from 94 to 99. Getting Placid open, getting the washouts between here and uh, Big Moose Field. Do you know what our buddy Bob has and Jimmy Ellison and all those guys? Oh, I, yeah, I just saw Jim yeah, Ellison in the station. Jimmy, yeah, yeah, I was sitting there with him. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, you worked at it for years. Well, Doug, thanks for that great story. Thank you, Let's John. hope that the, the resurgent Adirondack yeah. Railroad doesn't end in that yeah. kind of fashion. 42 years to make the round trip, but I'm back. You're back, Doug. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right, you're welcome, John. Hey, Bill! Bill! DeAndre! How's it going, Bill? Oh, it's great. Oh, I know. DeAndre, right, you're, you're a star, DeAndre. and John Taby and Aaron Crow Lewis, uh, who works for the Adirondack Railroad. And uh, John, just going to talk for a minute or two about uh, the significance of the run up to Tupper today. Hi, John. I'm standing here with Aaron Crow, the Director of Passenger Operations for the Railroad, and we're both very delighted to finally get to Tupper Lake after all of these years since 1965. But this is a very significant event because there's so many volunteers and employees of the railroad that have been working hard for the past 30 years to come to Tupper Lake. And we're very pleased to be here, and I'm sure Eric is just as well. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you both. Here's a, here's a well-known here's a well-known railroader, John K. Uh, Works for the Bulk at Adirondack and Northern. He's helping out today. How was the ride up, John? Awesome. He has done a beautiful job. It was a great day for it, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So, well, let's hope for a great trip back down. Yeah, enjoy. Have a good, have a good time. Okay, you take care. Take care, John. Well, the run around around the train is completed. The engines are now facing south.
celebrate Railroad Heritage to Adirondack Park to Tuck Lake. So, anything you'd like to say, Harry or Phil? Well, I'm very happy that a chapter in Utica saw the need to start this railroad up again in 1992. We were the organization that applied to New York State for a permit. This was after the bankruptcy of the Frank Veneer had around that railroad. And I'm glad to see 30 years later, we're still here operating. Very good. And Phil, I know you're a little camera shy, but... The Central New York Chapter National Railway Historical Society is just as thrilled and happy and honored to be a part of today's historical event as we were in 1965. Thank you very much for everybody that was behind this wonderful event today, and we look forward to many years ahead of wonderful times together as a joint effort of all railway historical societies and the Adirondack Railroad. Very good, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. So there's more than just trains up here in Tupper today. There's a really nice dog named Tinker. Tinker's a 10-year-old golden retriever and came out here to see the train come up from Utica. And uh, thank you so much. I just, I thought Tinker was very photogenic. Thank you. All right, well, have a good day, Tinker. There it is. Oh, thanks. So I got a turkey. So I, I was going to say that, well, I am going to say that I, I, I was going to have a ham sandwich, and now Conductor Mile found a turkey sandwich for me. I had previously ordered a turkey, but Bill, we had a, vid a good video yesterday, and now you're the conductor on this big historic run. Anything you want to share with the worldwide viewership of Railroading Rambler? Oh, my. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. You're speechless? That's usually not the case, but it was a good trip, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Anything out of the ordinary? Uh, just no. everything A+. Plus. We even got in early. I thought so. So, Well, it's so. due to professionals like yourself, this railroad runs so smoothly. Oh, well, thanks. Kind of, <laughs> Speaking of butterball, there's your turkey. Uh, thanks a lot, Bill. <laughs> Bill, Bill. Bill and I went to... Uh, we've known each other for 50 years. We went to junior... We met... Junior high in 1972. Sequoia? Trussell. So we're crossing over the Moose River now, about 15 minutes out of Vendera. The Moose River. And we'll be going past the old McKeever station. It's been a private camp since about 1960 in the same family's ownership. And there it was, the old McKeever station. Wow, we just passed through Forestport a couple minutes ago. Engine 2042 was up front on the way north. Now it's in the back and we're just behind the engines. We're on the way north. We were the tail end of the train. So we're nearing Snow Junction. Very close, very close to the end of the uh, home rails of the Adirondack Railroad. And Bill Maul's going to get out and rewind the switch so that it's uh, heading towards line fall so that the Maul head around the north will not have to rewind the switch for movement north to Boonville and line fall. Well, it looks like Lynn's going to be throwing the switch to rewind the track so that any trains going to Boonville or Lyons Falls on the left there it won't have to stop and throw the switch. Lynn is a retired railroader and a well-respected gentleman. Here he goes, throwing the switch, relocking the padlock. Checking to make sure everything was okay. Good job, Lynn. What, pass? Good job. I don't care what Bill says about you. You get it done in the clutch. 
<laughs> we're in Remsen, we're running along the Ariskany, the Cincinnati Creek. We'll catch a glimpse of a waterfalls in just a few seconds. Now, now. 21 miles from Utica. There. And there's the waterfalls. Very peaceful. And there's my seatmate Harry, who's had a great trip. Hello, people. Well, Bill, we had a great trip. We're back in Utica. I know there's a few more things for you to do, but I'd like to thank you for answering all my dumb questions, and it was a great ride. I've been doing it for 50 years. You have it with that. All right, Bill, good night. Good night.